Here with uh, Peter Sincotti, one of the most impressive up-and-coming songwriters on the New York scene today. Uh, Peter, uh, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, Elton John, Billy Joel, uh, Neil Diamond, Jim Steinman, these are all songwriters that immediately come to mind when I watch you perform. Uh, you are a phenomenal, well, thank you. <laughs> you're, you're a fen phenomenal piano-driven songwriter. Were these big influences on you? They Actually, they were. Um, and I hear the first two a lot, you know, uh, I think it's really just because I play piano and I sing and there's not all that many people that do that. I hear Elton, I hear Billy a lot. Neil Diamond, I don't hear that much, but but yes, he is. I love Neil Diamond. Well, in your song, what is it, Goodbye Philadelphia? Yeah, that's funny you said that, it, too. It seems like you're reaching for, for Neil Diamond's throne. And, you're one, and, and I all. always thought so, but nobody called me on it until now, so you, you oh. called me on that. But yeah, I, a, I hear that in that song. I have song. a unique frame of reference. <laughs> uh, your song, Magnetic, is very evocative of like a lot of early Billy Joel uh, albums. Um, how much uh, time did you spend growing up listening to Billy Joel? Uh, you know, he was in the mix with with a lot of my influences that were of all different worlds. I mean, a, a lot of I started with listening to all kinds of just piano players. Like my first influence w was Jerry Lee Lewis. I was five years old. I bought Great Balls of Fire on a cassette tape, and I would be obsessed with boogie woogie, like '50s rock and roll, uh, Chuck Berry, Fats Domino, and I went through that phase, and then. I got into like a heavy jazz phase of listening to people like Oscar Peterson and Elton John and then I got into like a 70s songwriter piano uh, per, uh, player phase and Billy Joel was a certain, certainly a huge part of that. And do you have a natural ear? I mean, because you already look like you were born on third base. I mean, <laughs> don't tell me you came into this world just being able to write these types of songs. It's the third time this week about the third base. I've heard somebody say third base. Not about me. <laughs> we were talking about Tony Danza before. Tony says that all the time. He says, this guy, you know, not about me, but about people. You know, this guy, uh, he looks like he, he was born on third base. He thinks he hit a triple, you know? <laughs> your, <laughs> I know you. Your sister recently wrote a, a play that you did all the music for that he is uh, oh, yes. acting in? Tony was a guest, surprise guest. Oh, a surprise guest. In this musical that my sister Pia wrote about a pool guy uh, who's obsessed with chlorine, the <laughs> chemical, and he gets the opportunity to chlorinate the ocean. Uh, on the surface, it's a very crazy comedy, but uh, to me, it's a, it's a love story. Once you get past that, I think about a third of the way in the play, you forget that it's about chlorine. So let's talk about your songwriting process. Yeah. Um, how does it work? I mean, where do these songs come from, and how do they come to life? I mean, it changes. I think you know, I, I would I would answer that a bit differently if talking about the record versus the play. For example, this was my first time writing for characters, so that's that process was very different than the songwriting process uh, in general for me. So, um, yeah, well, Let's I mean, take Magnetic, for example. I remember just seeing just, pi just pictures, you know, of this story about this guy who is um, just uh, uh, consumed with uh, uh, an attraction towards a girl that uh, he shouldn't have. The guy's almost blaming it on science saying it's not my fault you know you're magnetic and I can and we can't yeah. help this even though we know morally it's wrong um, but yeah it usually starts with like pictures of that you know also the the records called Metropolis that gave way to different stories because I looked at the album as kind of like a city and each song like a neighborhood in that city yeah. and magnetic is a story is one of the stories that in my mind are happening simultaneously with some of the other stories other tracks on the record. Now, now coming out to your live shows, um, it is very infrequent that I come across a performer that is so incredibly comfortable in their own skin and, and in front oh, of an nice audience. <laughs> uh, you've got these people eating out of the palm of your hands. Uh, oh, how long have you been at this? I've been playing my whole life. I mean, I started playing when I was three years old, and um, and I started performing in clubs here in New York when I was uh, like 13. Was like I think my first gig. I don't know how the hell I got into some of those bars because they, they wouldn't yeah. allow me in, but yeah. wherever there was a piano, I would just try to find a way to play. And I, I studied with a lot of people, great teachers in the city that would perform in town as well. And whenever I came to see them, they, they were generous enough to share the stage and call me up. And that was a huge part of my education. You know? Well, you're, you're a bit torch song, a bit troubadour, a bit balladeer. Uh, a bit rocker. I mean, that's what I get when yeah. I when I watch you play. Uh, what are some other descriptions that people have used about you? It's music? funny, you know. I've made four records so far. This is my fourth, and each record has been quite different from from the other. My first two are closer together, and my last two are closer together. But they're pretty. 
polarizing on the surface to people. Not to me. To me, they seem like logical next steps. But to answer your question, I hear all kinds of contradicting comparisons from one record to the next, and uh, it's hard. It's hard to answer that because they're, they're, it's all over the map. Do you aim for a cohesive theme when you set out to write an album? Um, sometimes it's there from the beginning, and sometimes uh, it, I find that theme halfway through. But either way, yes, I do want to make records that are you know, uh, unified and, and are a collection of songs that are connected to each other. So um, I feel like people are, uh, care less and less about that these yeah. days and just want to make tracks. So uh, it's never been my, my interest. Though. Yeah, concept albums are uh, few and far between. I'm actually working on a concept album about uh, ADD. Oh, wow, that's yeah, cool. it's what? inherently that's ironic. Great. I was just going to say, yes. that's very ironic. And, uh, that's great. Shopping producers right now. Oh, man, that's I joke. love that idea. That's a joke. Piece. Is it? Yeah. Because I'm ready to write that record with you. <laughs> okay. I love that idea. As, as spectacular as your talent is, as stellar as I think the trajectory that you are on is, what do you feel some of the challenges you face uh, today are? Um... I mean, seriously speaking, that um, the fact that, that albums are seem to be a thing, you know, a, a slowly becoming a thing of the past. Um, yeah, attention span, uh, the business. There's no formula anymore. I think there's that, that's a double-edged sword in a way. It could be it could be a good thing for for artists. It could be a bad thing. People are searching for the next formula. The record companies are are sinking in a way, and um, it's tough. But they so, like to pigeonhole you. They like to say you're like this. Of course. I mean, God. If you, especially if you have success. Like when I first started my first record, I was successful with that first record, which was a jazz record. So everybody around me wanted me to just keep making the same record for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I, and that's, that's the last thing I want to do. I was 18. Be another, you didn't want to be a Harry Connick a Junior Junior. I just wanted to play what I wanted to play. I couldn't care who they compared me to. And I, I wasn't about to just make the same record, but you know, on a business standpoint, I made money at work. Let's do a part two. Mm -hmm. So you know, when you think like that, uh, yes, commercially you run risks, but uh, you have to ask yourself early on why why are you in this business? And um, and for me, it's just I want to I want to be able to play what I want and be on stage and play from the heart. I mean, I would never be able to sell it anyway to the audience. I feel like the audience would know if I were yeah. you know. So that's tricky, but it runs, it runs, it, you know, flies in the face of the business. So, yeah. Well, uh, judging from what I've seen in terms of the audience response and my own response and uh, from what I just believe about your talent, I think that you will overcome these challenges. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate you'll it. You'll definitely get where you're going. It's been an absolute pleasure well, having you today. Oh, well, thank wish you very you the best much. Thank you, Jimmy. Really good to, good to you. see you.